Hi, once again, this is episode number 784, and today I'm taking a little detour into something a bit more interesting. Well, different, I was interesting. <laughs> so the topic today is um, life is better than you realize. Stop complaining and count your blessings. That's the full title. And I'm going to use a pretty, um, not diabolical, it's the wrong word. I'll use an interesting analogy, but I'll talk about something else in a moment. So before I jump into all that and confuse you even more, <laughs> let me start by choosing myself so you know who I am, what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I am the best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, which is a book about relationships for singles and couples, men and women. And I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which affords my work with women and also what led to these talks starting over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. Today we're episode number 784. Yes, I've done these every day. Well, after the first three or four months I was doing weekly, but now I'm doing every day. So 784 of these. And today we're talking about complaining and blessings and getting over your crap. And I'm saying this because, um, well, in full transparency, I happened to go see a movie last night that was shocking, challenging, inspirational, and humbling. Not necessarily in that order. Um, the movie, I, I was actually went to the Museum of Tolerance that a friend of mine goes to, and once in a while I go to see movies there, and I've talked about a couple before. This one, I didn't know what to expect. Um, the movie is called For... Oh, For Aman? For Amal? No, I remember, for Sama, there we go, Sama, S-A-M-A. I don't remember the name for a second. And it's, it's for her, that she, Sama's the name of a girl. This movie is basically a documentary of a woman who was just a, almost a girl when she started 10 years ago in Aleppo, in Syria. And it's the journey of her life, and I'm not gonna give you all the details because some it's pretty horrific, but it talks about the rebel, rebellion in her Aleppo and what happened with Assad and the whole regime and everything happened. It was heartrending, and watching what they went through, her and their and her now husband, who actually met last night, they re, they live in London now, and were happened to be at the showing last night of this movie. It's going to go on wide release. I recommend if you want to get some humbling an experience, I recommend watching the movie. It's going to be on wide. It's going to be on um, limited release in LA, New York, and I think Chicago as well. And I say it's called for it's for for Sama. Sama is the name. S A M A is the name, is the girl's the daughter's name. Anyway, bottom line is this. Well, I mean, let me give you a couple of pieces more piece of the movie. If you don't know the story about what happened in Aleppo, it was basically a bunch of college students that started a rebellion where they didn't want to follow the lead of Assad and the regime that was in place. And the retaliation and response was way out of proportion. And they had, and basically, um, because the woman's husband, the woman's boyfriend that became husband is a was a doctor in the hospital, they were targeted because the Russian um, raids took out hospitals, schools, and bakeries to demoralize the people. And it was quite a horrendous deal to watch this movie. And it was pretty graphic too. So if you got a strong, if you don't have a strong stomach, I don't recommend watching it. But the reason I'm talking about this now is because this is still happening. And in the conversation with these people last night, the husband and wife, it was so clear that they had escaped from what hasn't been finished yet. And so when I look at my life, personally, and I presume I invite you to look at yours too, it humbled me dramatically. You know, I complain about the fact the internet went out for two hours, or the fact that I don't have thousands of dollars in my bank account at the moment. I realize just how, how fickle I've been about what's valuable. Now, one of the things I'm going to talk about, and I'm getting off the topic of that dramatic a scene, but frankly, if you have anything you're complaining about, just realize that maybe what you have isn't that bad. One thing I've recommended to a lot of my clients, I do it myself, is to keep a gratitude journal or jar as a means to keep track of our blessings because it's tempting to get caught up in the complaining and bitching and moaning about things that aren't working when your car breaks down or um, a lady you're waiting for doesn't arrive. The simple things, to be honest. Yet, we don't always remember the good stuff. And part of the challenge is, I think, because we live in a culture that's generally spun towards Againstness and limitation and judgment and, and negative stuff, we forget to think about the positive blessings and joy. So, as simple as it sounds, I do recommend such a thing as a, as a gratitude journal, or if, what I do in my case, I recommend for my clients, keep a gratitude jar. What I and I, I have it here so I can show you. 
this this is my gratitude jar that's already that's that's basically from the beginning of the year and I just put three or four write uh, uh, notes in each day each night of things I'm grateful for and if you do that it becomes a really powerful talisman or um, what's the word looking for a um, ah the word's going to my head well talisman works <laughs> by having something physical so if you use a journal make sure it's a nice journal you keep it you by your bedside or at your desk wherever you keep it there's something you want to hold on to not just a, not just a scratch pad but an, a notebook maybe a journal that has a nice binder on it or a cover something like that I say I keep a jar that has has room hopefully we'll see what happens it's only July we'll see if it lasts at the end of the year because it may be too small by the time the end of the year comes around but I basically write out notes every day again three or four things I'm grateful for and it can be the simplest thing like I went to the grocery store and got what I needed for the week that day or like today you put some my post earlier today um, I'd made my my favorite one of my favorite desserts with chocolate mousse that okay I'm grateful for that it's the simplest things you can do but by having things that you're grateful for to make points three four gratitude points for the day it will change your mood it will change your focus and it will change frankly your destiny and it sounds very simplistic and almost like you can change your destiny what do you mean by that what I mean literally is because you're doing is you're changing your course I talked about on course off course and feedback yesterday or the day before this is actually another point about that is where you set your energy toward is where you go and if you're focusing on negative uh, challenging upsetting distressing things they will tend to show up more often because you're focusing there. The power we have to create our reality is much, much further beyond than what most, most people, much further beyond what most people think. So you may not know this, or maybe you don't think about this. Either way, listen up. You create your reality, meaning you create your experience. The blessings we actually have in life, which are prolific. The fact you wake up in the morning and you can actually breathe is a blessing. The fact that you have hot water and cold water running in the taps is a blessing. The fact you can go online, you can watch this video <laughs> or something else on social media is a blessing. Anything that you do during the day can be a blessing. You can say, oh no, it's not fast enough internet or the water wasn't hot enough or I woke up late. All these different excuses to judge and blame or judge and limit what you actually had. All it's going to do is to spin you in a negative direction. You have a choice every single moment. And I put a post about this earlier today. You can actually, because it was the quote I put out today, or the post, the meme I posted earlier today was, um, "Worrying is like praying for what you don't want." And that's not an, that's not a new t um, type uh, meme that's been around forever. And I know that other people have talked about it, even Reverend Michael Agape talks about that. But worrying is definitely a limiting perspective and if you're praying for what you don't want and it shows up because when you pray for things they tend to show up your life is going to be a bit annoying and why would you want to do that my my um invitation i'll be nice my invitation is to put your energy into what you do want is to focus on the things that you do experience that are good and having things you focus on that you're blessings that you can call you're grateful for if, again journal jar whatever you use to be grateful for are pivot points to shift your focus and if your life isn't going the way you want it to maybe if you shifted to just doing three gratitude journal writings a day or counting blessings or praying for what you want as a positive thing affirming what's already happening the thing about this and it's something I've heard many times before I actually heard it on a, on a, video, on a conference call early today the um, what was it they said it that, I don't remember how they said it we create our reality and what happens is because of what we believe what we think what we say the power we have the power we have is infinite but we don't always think it we believe we can only have a certain thing and again I said you create a reality we all do so if your life isn't as, as big as wonderful as amazing as it could be are you believing that it can't be because that's what's holding you back it isn't anything else the more you hold on to the vision of what you want, and this is a lot of attraction stuff, so it's not like it's unusual or new, but I'm sure it's been said in some of Esther Hicks' books or teachings, Oyster and Jerry Hicks, the truth is simple. You create your reality. Especially, you create your experience of your reality. Because you may not necessarily be able to control the weather, <laughs> 
that's another one we can talk about another level but you do control your response to the weather you know yesterday morning in LA in the late July it rained for a bit I was kind of tickled by that I wasn't upset by it I wasn't I mean I, was, I didn't have to go anywhere on my bike or anything I wouldn't go out in the weather so I could stay inside but I was definitely feeling this experience of amusement by it now some people who may be driving on the freeway at that time with especially after having not having rain for a few months might be concerned more scared or more concerned or more upset Different, different perspectives on the same experience or the same thing happening. So what I'm attempting to say here, <laughs> bring it down to a central point, is that when you worry about stuff, you're focusing negatively. When you affirm what you want, you're, refer, you're, you're moving things positively. Now, I'm not saying don't deal with the reality of things that aren't working. You can do things to fix that. But if, you're gonna, if you have something that's not working you need to work on or fix or resolve, why not hold a positive spin of where you want it to go? It's not like ignoring the negative stuff. I'm not talking about that either. But the reality is that life is a lot better than you think it is. So complaining, judging, worrying about stuff isn't helping. Facing the fact you've got to deal with some stuff that isn't working. Maybe you do have a, a parking ticket you need to take care of. Then take care of it. But judging, complaining, and bitching and moaning because you parked in the wrong space or you judge the parking people for ticketing you when they shouldn't have done that doesn't help anybody and what it'll do is propagate more of the negative stuff it really is as simple as changing direction that course correction stuff I talked about the other day I think it was yesterday about how you're on how your positive and negative feedback and then how you respond to that's up to you positive and negative feedback are just feedback or some of criticism and something else that was yesterday's talk I believe watch yesterday's talk for more detail I went in a whole different whole deeper spin about this this is kind of a similar thing is that our course in life is governed by our focus so if your focus is spun towards judgment doubt worry concern fear that's where your life will go if your life is focused towards what more is possible how good could it get I'm counting my blessings I'm thankful and grateful for what happened today that's where life's gonna go as well you get to choose and either one is a choice I'm not saying one's better than the other I have a bias but you understand that you have the choice Life may not be perfect, for a lot of people it isn't, but you get to choose where you start to put your energy and what direction you put it in. Hi Mary, what are we saying so right on? Um, and the people who show up in life complain and cycle negativity too. This is so encouraging. Well, I'm glad you like it, I'm glad you're encouraged. And by the way, this is a Facebook Live, so I'm responding to somebody who's typing comments right as I'm, I'm talking, in case you're wondering, if you're watching on YouTube, what happened. Um, yeah, exactly, so choice point is up or down basically up towards positive positive direction affirming grateful hum, humble choosing positive or down into negative upsetting limiting hurtful I talked before in another talk which is a whole other spin about how we impact our health and our beingness by our attitude this is another part of that that you can choose and you can actually um, create a new reality by simply changing direction of your thinking and it's not Pollyanna thinking by the way I'm not going to go on that not about that but it's like every single day you can come up with three things you're grateful for it's that simple if you start with that and start building and see where it goes you never know maybe in a week or two after that you start doing five a day it's up to you there's no there's no right wrong way of doing it except to do it and again gratitude affirming good things are going to change the direction of your life the course of your life and it really is up to you. Now, if you're getting stuck in this, is part of my work with my clients as a sidebar is I do help them reframe their mood, reframe their energy, reframe their direction. And it, part of it is to shift the energy towards being more positive towards themselves. The self-love practice I teach, the self-affirming, self-support stuff I teach as a side effect is to create more self-generated happiness. And that's where life really change, changes too because you're no longer dependent upon what's out there to be happy, it starts inside. That's not the secret of life, by the way. All of it starts inside. So your choice, your mood, your happiness, your joy, it all starts inside. And frankly, if you're not doing that, what are you waiting for? This is the reality that we're not victims in life. We may not have what we want, and I've definitely gone through my own throes recently of feeling frustration with the way that certain things in life aren't working the way I want, like the government, <laughs> but the recognition is that I don't have to sit in a funky mood about that and judge and complain about it 
I can be more neutral, more centered, more alive and more aligned. So what I can affirm is where I want to go rather than where I don't want to go. Was that saying, Mary, oh, you're, you're noticing you're no longer willing to listen to the negativity and down putting of others. You catch yourself leaving interactions when they start the old habitual type negativity, not with your precious time and attention anymore. Exactly. Now you know better. This is the thing. There are people around you perhaps in life who aren't getting this message, who don't live this message of living positively affirmatively. You don't have to stick around. Even your family, if they're completely bitching and moaning, you can tell them this is not the energy you want to play around with, that you want to focus differently. If they want to join you in that, great. If they don't, it's okay to walk away. There's no rules that say you have to pay penance to sit in situations with people who are negative. That's not the rules. And frankly, if you're a 24 um, seven news watcher, it's gonna be challenging because most of the news out there is intentionally negative and limiting. You know, one thing I remember Michael said up here about calling CNN was constantly negative news. Most of the news networks are negative, not just CNN. So to hold a positive spin is quite something. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning, the movie that I saw which was extremely dark and, and painful to watch. It was actually very liberating and freeing at the end because to see them get free from, from being in, um, I forgot the place, <laughs> it was in Syria, in um, Aleppo. That whole thing was incredible experience to watch. And I'll put, I'll put a link in the comments. I think I should, I should put, a, put a link in the comments for the movie so you can check it out for yourself. Again, it's not a pretty movie, it's not, it is very, it is very um, I mean, this is real life people getting killed and wounded and injured. It's pretty dark stuff, but the, the life affirming part of it is incredible. But it was really what inspired this talk today to talk about how we all have a choice. And frankly, living in the Western world is a lot better than other parts of the, of the world. So that alone can be an affirmative place to say, you know what, I'm grateful I live in this country or I live in this town or I live in this house or I live in this apartment or live in this part of the world. That could be one of your daily affirmations too, one of the statements of what's going on. There's choices here. There's opportunities here to claim a positive direction in your life. And it starts with you. Hopefully that somebody started some sort of gardening tool outside. I hope it is not too noisy you can't hear on the microphone. Anyway, um, that's my cue, I guess, to wrap up. Choose what you focus on. Choose where you want to go. Remember, the choice starts with you every single time. You can make a difference. You can make it different from what it's been. You can change your experience today from what it was yesterday. It's all within your power because every moment is new. I recommend a gratitude jar, a gratitude um, journal, uh, journal as a starting point. If that's something you haven't done before, it really works. That's why I said, I'm holding up mine. That's why I've got a gratitude jar myself. See, gratitude on the front. Um, it's a tool, but it's a tool to remember where it comes from. So, was that Mary? You're willing to take, you're willing to take, whoops. Oh, you don't, oh, you don't know, okay. Yeah, I just heard this big um, generator going off. So you're willing to take your word for the inspiration without subjecting your heart to murder, mayhem, and sadness. Well, yeah, it, it's, it's a profound movie and it was, it was heart rending and heart moving, but I get to meet the people, the husband and wife who were in the movie last night, as I mentioned at the beginning, and they were the, watching them and talking about their journey with their kids was, was, was gratifying and very humbling at the same time. So anyway, so to wrap things up, um, I will put some links in the comments. My book will be in the comments. The self-love practice will be there too. And come home to yourself because that's part of this work. Um, that'll be in the comments as well. And if you want to talk to me, I'll put a link in the comments as well for, for a uh, complimentary chat with me. So there'll be four links in the comments. And if I find a link for the movie, I'll put that in the comments too. Take this to heart. You have control, you have dominion, you have choice. If you don't use them, I can't help you and you can't help yourself. If you do choose them, you can make a difference in your life and make your life a better place to live. Why not make it a better place? It's your life, why not enjoy it? And yes, even if your life can't change, you can change your attitude to your life, which is why you do a gratitude and affirm where you want to go. Your direction of life is based upon where you put your energy. You focus towards the positive, you go towards the positive. Focus towards the negative, it goes towards the negative. It's your choice. I think I made that pretty clear. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will be back in tomorrow at the same time, same channel. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can uh, follow, you can find me there, or you can watch them on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Alternatively, you can find me on YouTube. So you can like my business page on Facebook, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine where all these live. So links will be in the comments. I invite you to check them out. Pick one, choose one, sign up for one, do one of them, change your life. Focus where you want to go 
and get what you want. I'm here to help. That's what I might do this every day. I invite you to watch me tomorrow. I'll be back in at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, that's it. I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.